will come to this discussion on pseudocyst of pancreas most of the times a pseudocyst will form after an acute pancreatitis now in a patient even with chronic pancreatitis they can on and off have acute exacerbations and in these cases also a pseudocyst is possible so what will be the history like So read this uh, clinical scenario. So a male who comes with a epigastric discomfort, a week. So it's a bit of a not a very acute problem for him. And pain, he said, uh, it's uh, it's actually a discomfort more than a pain. And the significant thing is that he was just recently discharged from hospital after an attack of acute pancreatitis. So this type of history is fairly typical of a pseudocyst but of course your history it's better to complete uh, other causes for epigastric discomfort it's always better to see I mean maybe he has some myocardial uh, ischemia so any uh, cardiac uh, symptoms and any other GI problems like uh, in metamesis melina um, whether uh, just to see whether it could be caused by the problem so it's always better to take a history, a good systemic inquiry, your medical histories and everything. And examination, uh, do a general examination, cardiovascular, respiratory and abdomen, there's slight fullness in this epigastric region. And uh, minimal tenderness, the abdomen are soft, no other organs in, enlarged, but there's a vague mass uh, which shows there in the epigastric region. So clinically, we thought that he has a pseudocyst. And then confirming, you can just recall your protocol that we did earlier. Now here doing an amylase is not very important because uh, it's not an acute uh, attack of pancreatitis, but means is to visualize the pancreas and also whether there's a cyst by some form of imaging. And uh, we got a C contrast CT for him and it confirmed this pseudocyst which was uh, bulging into the stomach so, uh, about 10 into 15 centimeter in size of course if CT facilities are not, not available uh, there are some hospitals in our country without CT uh, ultrasound is good enough and then how to manage now pseudocysts you don't embark on an intervention soon because a substantial number may regress the size can regress with time so it can get absorbed and also because there's no true epithelial lining the ball has to mature to a certain extent before you do any intervention so these collections you don't do anything in rush but of course in acute pancreatitis in the early phase if any cyst any fluid collection uh, if the desasac shows some evidence of infection then you may do ultrasound uh, guided aspiration that is only you can uh, infect the disease. But here this is a routine type of uh, elective type of presentation. So we managed to manage conservatively and review. So he was uh, given some symptomatic treatment, reassured discharge. And uh, after six weeks, we got the patient back into the clinic. So uh, a pseudocyst to manage conservatively and you review after six weeks. And this time we got an ultrasound scan which still showed the cyst. It has not regressed that much. So as a general rule, uh, after six weeks, if the size of the cyst is more than six centimeters and if the patient is symptomatic, then there is an indication to interfere. Now after six weeks, it, it just six centimeter but it has come down from the original size patient is symptomatic you may further watch so so you have to uh, match for your patient's need but our patient still cyst was 10 into 12 centimeter and the person had symptoms so we thought he needs an interference so what are the methods to interfere with the cyst one thing as i discussed for the acute the infected cyst one is possible to do ultrasound guided aspiration but of course the there's a chance that it may recur and the gold standard 
for uh, pseudocyst is to do a cystogastrostomy that is to drain the cyst into the stomach why is cystogastrostomy because anatomically you know the pancreas is behind the stomach behind the stomach you have the lesser sac and the posterior wall of the lesser sac is the pancreas and as we showed in the CT cyst bulges into the stomach so you can make a opening here and drain the cyst into the stomach so this is uh, traditionally this is done by the doing a laparotomy then you open the abdomen and you make incision in the stomach anterior wall of the stomach you make incision get into the stomach and then make a another incision in the posterior wall so that the fluid will drain into the stomach and then close the stomach so it's done by a laparotomy then with minimal access surgery coming this can be done laparoscopically that is laparoscopically you again you make the incision in the stomach and posterior on the stomach and suture so the advantage of laparoscopic technique is that you avoid a laparotomy but still you are making a gastrotomy anterior wall of the stomach has to be open and then sutured so it can cause some of some form of a morbidity but the recent the most uh, recent advance in surgery for treating pseudocysts is of course you will very well understand that with the endoscope it is if you make incision here and drain that will cause the least morbidity to the patient so we have this facility in our hospital so the person we are discussing we did the cystogastrostomy by endoscopy so the advantage is there's no general anesthesia and also the person can be started on liquids uh, very soon and in fact this patient got discharged on the following day so cystogastrostomy is a treatment of choice for pseudocyst of the pancreas which persists beyond six weeks larger than six centimeter in size and symptomatic so three criteria to decide persisting beyond six weeks more than six centimeters in size and symptomatic and cystogastrostomy the best way to do is by endoscopy but if this facility is not available or it is not uh, possible to do then you do the cystogastrostomy either by laparoscopy but even that is not possible then of course laparotomy now to do the cystogastrostomy endoscopically if you have the facility of endoscopic ultrasound it can give uh, better landmarks for you to decide where to drain so the standard operation is cystogastrostomy but there are some cysts which may point in a different direction so sometimes like cystogejunostomies are done but if uh, but th those happen very rarely so you you remember even this only that is more than enough for your final exam so that is how a pseudocyst is managed and refer back to the discussion of chronic pancreatitis and in that we said the chronic pancreatitis another complication is the duct obstructions either the uh, commonest duct to get obstructed is of course the pancreatic duct it may be due to fibrosis or stones in the pancreatic duct and some cases the bile duct can get obstructed and they can present with obstructive joints so uh, this is the person who uh, we diagnosed chronic pancreatitis and in the initial imaging he had a dilated pancreatic duct with a stone obstructing the duct so these people for to for for to, to treat this to relieve the duct by removing the cavity obstructing it helps in the pain management the pain also they settle and also it stops further destruction on the gland so the best way to do this uh, to remove the stone in the pancreatic duct best way in the sense the least morbidity is by ERCP so uh, ERCP has two uh, visualizations the endoscopic image and uh, when the once endoscope is there you cannulate the pancreatic duct and the cannulation after that they are all, all guided by your the C arm the radiological image so we got the scope there cannulated the duct 
with the radiographic uh, image, we confirm that the guide bar is in the in the pancreatic duct. Synchromy was done, and then over the guide wire, uh, the uh, balloon was passed in, and we managed to pull out the stone obstructing, and then we passed a stent inside. So the stenting part, uh, there's a video clip just for your interest. And you can see you know here the ampulla water and the bile the, the it is cannulated and then synchromy done which facilitates the pulling out of the stones then uh, the stone was removed and a stent was passed into the pancreatic duct which after some times you can remove so that's that's your stent coming in of course these are edited clips so once it is done, you pass a guide wire, remove the stone, and over the guide wire, the stent goes in. It involves multiple steps. And if a person uh, with chronic pancreatitis present with obstructive jaundice, again, the first line management would be to pass a stent. And because the inflammation settled, they may get better. But if it's a tight stricture, then another option is of course to bypass a polycystic or jejunostomy. And the cases uh, where the pancreatic duct is dilated, pancreatic duct dilated, and if your ERCP fail to do the stenting, then of course again by open surgery is possible and here what is done is the pancreatic duct is open because of course you have to expose the pancreas you know the pancreas is retropatrial structure your stomach is there your transverse colon is there if you divide the gastrocolic omentum you enter the lesser sac and then you can identify the pancreas and by cannulation you can find the duct and then you make a longitudinal opening in the duct and then a through loop of jejunum is brought in there and incision made in the jejunum and pancreatic duct is sutured into the jejunal loop so that is called a pancreatic jejunostomy so for obstructed pancreatic duct if ERCP doesn't work with open surgery it's possible to do a pancreatic jejunostomy so these are the methods to manage some other complications of chronic pancreatitis and pseudocysts which may be or which usually follows an acute attack and it may be not even in a just uh, acute pancreatitis, it may happen. Then the duct obstructions, the pancreatic duct and bile duct, which of course happens in chronic, chronic pancreatitis. Best way is to manage with endoscopy, stenting, but uh, if it fails, then open surgery is possible.